yet another incredible, never dull 24 hours in the crypto space, guys. Today, we're going to be covering briefly, well, the whole point of this fake spot Bitcoin ETF news. There, I'm not going to go into too much because it's been covered to death already. But for me, it was absolutely crazy. I was waiting to go into this event when the news broke and I was trying to verify it. And then you wouldn't believe what happens to me, guys, after this, just like 45 minutes after this. You'll never believe. I'll get into this in just a second. But this is my actual, I'll play this for you a second, my actual video recording where I'm sitting. This is the editor-in-chief of Cointelegraph and Mario. I was at this event. Uh, and so we'll get into that. But really, there's important lessons here that we all need to learn and take away from. And I'll get into these because I know exactly how almost everybody was feeling when this news broke. If you were, if you caught a glimpse of Bitcoin spot ETF iShares approved, if you got that news before you found out it was fake, I'm going to tell you exactly how everyone felt, what happened in the market, what Larry Fink did, and why he's going all in, why it's too crazy to not be all in on Bitcoin at this time, and exactly how to play the market. I'm not all in 100% on Bitcoin, but I've taken a certain percentage of my portfolio, allocated that toward Bitcoin, and I believe at this point it's far too risky to be hoping for Bitcoin at a lower price. Now, altcoins, we're going to talk about this, guys. So in this video, we're going to quickly go over this timeline of events, and then we're going to go into the most important thing, which is how to play the altcoin market moving forward. And guys, I am just trying to drill this into your brain video after video after video, because I have a really good game plan on how to play the market moving forward, and I just want to share that with you guys. So if that sounds good to you guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. My name is Kyle Chasse. I've been in this space for 12 years, and it's just wild. <laughs> so uh, I want to be the best prepared for the upcoming bull run, and I hope that you guys feel the same way, and that's what the goal of this channel is all about. So let's get into it, guys. Let's check it out. So. Here is when the news, bro news broke. This was the exact tweet that was then later deleted at uh, yesterday at 321, wherever this, uh, this was taken from. Obviously, the screenshot, I think, comes from Jake. Um, but you can see here on the timeline, for, my, for me, where I am right now in Dubai, it was 5.30 or 5.20, like, so like right here. What's interesting to see here, guys, is look at this buy pressure, right? And to give you some context, you might think, oh, well, that's just normal volatility of the market but if you look back at the timeline here look at you just you don't see those types of green candles forever right like it just just nothing and then there was this before this announcement happened boom look at this it's pretty pretty dramatic right and here's when uh 5 30 when actually it started circulating when i when it got to my attention and then everyone's you know trying to wonder if this is real and people are just like f it going long boom boom Always spiking all the way up to 30k, and then people found out that it was not, you know, not real, and then boom, 100 million dollars in shorts liquidated. And then we'll get in. This is the interesting part here, guys. So what is going on here, right? What is going on with the price here? This is where it was pre-fake news, and look, we're still, even right now. This was fake news, 15:30. To where we are right now, you're still up, you know, three percent essentially from that time. Uh, so, if it, normally from when we get these kind of fake news events or something, you just see sell pressure. But what happened is, let me tell you how I felt. So, the second that this happened, I, I couldn't believe it, right? And before I came in, I was gonna instantly make a video, but I wanted to, to make sure this was true because. This is huge news and no one was expecting it to happen so soon. But how everybody felt was, oh my God, I'm not positioned properly. I'm underexposed. I should have Bitcoin. And that is why you see this continued, because this is everybody here realizing, I don't want to be caught in that situation because, because what happened, guys, if you check this out again here, what you see here from, let's say even, even th this right here is probably some sort, I don't know how it happened. I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to bl blame Cointelegraph. You know, things happened. I don't know what happened, right? But there was 
some manipulation happening here, right? And so you see pre, if this is the, if this is someone planning to buy this pump, right? All the way to the pump, this is a 10% price pump, right? And so if it could pump 10% on fake news, imagine all the people that were waiting for confirmation like me, who know better than to buy without confirming from the actual source itself. Imagine the pump that would have happened if it was actual real news, right? Before BlackRock got on the phone with all of their investors and associates and started shilling it and buying and buying and buying. If it would have been confirmed from actually BlackRock or the SEC, we could have seen a 40, 50% pump, no problem, right? So, so you don't want to be caught with your pants down here. So let's get in back into the timeline of events and just real quickly, right? So Cointelegraph is the first to break the ETF approval. Bloomberg uh, ETF analyst asking for a source. Then you see Eleanor, and guys, I retweeted all this stuff too. If you're just following me on, on X, you, you will get the most breaking news uh, as it happens. Um, but you know, you can see that, yeah, so this was 100 million uh, liquidated, boom, boom, another day in crypto. Uh, but this is, this, so this is this sentiment that I had is shared amongst a lot of people. Guessing a bunch of people poop their pants and won't risk being left sidelined again going into that, right? So the Bitcoin price is, is obviously not, is not priced in. Now, I made this tweet because I can imagine that Gary will try to use this potentially. And it's, and, and yes, there's a bunch of people in the comments saying that, that yeah, it's like manipulation happens in all markets, not just ours. And that this is, can't be used. And I agree with you, all of you guys, like it doesn't make any logical sense for them to use this against us as the main reason what Gensler has said, as you can see here in this post, uh, you know, Bitcoin manipulating, uh, Bitcoin pricing. Right. And, but, we already know that the, the courts have ruled this capricious and, and, and BS for a reason, and it's not a good excuse to prevent an ETF being uh, being broadcast or, or be, being accepted. So you can see that here, uh, this this tweet here, this post, 1.1 um, million impressions, and uh, you can see where this guy was. This is me just sitting in the front row. So that, that was that was me it's like just just right after this and then watching you know this discussion between Mario and Christina editor in chief of Coin Telegraph talking about essentially what had happened here and uh, and you know this is a, this is a big big mistake of course lessons learned here and in the traditional markets you know for any type of market manipulation if it can be tied back to someone intentionally doing it this is serious serious jail time so uh, I, I, I hope that, you know, this doesn't cause anything, but again, what it did do is it really, and it, this is just Cointelegraph coming out and saying, you know, admitting the thing and then giving you kind of this postmortem, the same thing that a, a, a project would do if they had a hack, they would come and say, Hey, here's what happened. Here's a series of events. I'm not going to get into it. What I really want to talk about guys is, you know, here's the SEC saying, be careful, go for the source. And this is, I love the, re the reply from Eric, from Ryan Selka saying the best source of info, uh, about the SEC is the courts who have been beating the sh shite out of you all year. I don't trust the SEC because it's a corrupt regulator that prioritizes Wall Street over retail, ESG, disclosure, ESG disclosures over capital formation, and foreign utilities over U.S. investors. Um, This is good too. That I feel like I should say something, but I won't. I can't imagine being a regulator and not regulating for 14 years. Always good to see the American public being protected by not protecting them at all. Yeah. Uh, so what I really want to get into, guys, let's listen to Larry here and uh, and talk about what's going on in the market and this positioning that people are now taking. And because we we were just at 26.5 the other day, and now we're at 28.5. Hold on. The rumor. I think. This rally is way beyond the rumor. I think the, the rally today is about a flight to quality with all the, you know, all the issues around the Israeli war now, um, global terrorism. And I think there's more people running into a fight to quality, whether that is in treasuries, gold, or crypto, depending on how you think about it. And I believe crypto will play that type of role as a flight to quality. Boom. There you go. You heard it. So... This is again, Larry Fink coming on just 
hours after this fake news saying, you know, he's, that he doesn't think this rally that's happening right now is due to, obviously, it was just, it was fake news, but people realizing they don't want to be caught with their pants down. So at this point, guys, you know, like I say, at least once or twice a week, right? And if you're watching my videos that, that anything at this price right now is a good buying opportunity because it's only 85 days away, guys, 85 days away until we have, you know, the, the deadline for the ARK invest. And if you watch my video yesterday, which I suggest that you all do, uh, we talk about exactly the logic why the odds from Bloomberg have been increased to 90% of the spot ETF being approved by January 10th, which is the ARK Invest final deadline. But like I keep saying that this ETF could get approved any day. And yesterday you saw a taste of what that looks like. It was just a taste of don't, so, so why would you be waiting and I, like I always say, guys, I, like I always say, when Bitcoin is sitting at you know five hundred thousand dollars, or like Arthur Hayes says, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, right by the end of twenty twenty five. Do you really care if you bought Bitcoin at twenty eight thousand five hundred, or would you be kicking yourself because you didn't buy it at twenty three thousand or something, right? So it's still, in my view, incredibly cheap now. Yeah, and, and like Will, Will Clemente says, if you think Larry shilling Bitcoin on live TV is cool, wait until BlackRock's entire army of financial advisors is doing it. And then I say this time and time again, right? It's just going to be so much money that flows into it. It's going to blow people's mind. I mean, it shot up to $30,000 in 30 minutes uh, on fake news, with just retail getting involved. I mean, just imagine when it actually, actually gets approved. And Alex comes and says, yeah, expect a 20% uh, day move when it's approved. I think that's undershooting it. I think that this, it might even be more than that. But the main question here is, what am I doing with alts, guys? And now I'm going to show you here that while Bitcoin pumped quite a bit, altcoin or Ether didn't pump at all this week, right? Bitcoin's up 4.2% for the week when Ethereum is just up 0.7%. And most alts aren't up very much at all, you know, compared to Bitcoin, right? So what we do know is that, and, and here's my thesis for the whole video, right, is that you're going to have time. You're going to have time. I don't expect alts to pump like crazy. I think right now is the best time for us to be talking about which ones have been doing extremely well in the bear market, right? And you, you want to look at that because if they haven't had their run in a bull market and they've been doing incredibly well in a bear market, right? Things like, things like Hilo that I talk about, Dubs, uh, Rollbit, right? Caspa, like these things have all been haven't had their opportunity for a bull market, but they've been performing very well, right? Very, very well. And we talk on this channel all the time about why they're performing well, real revenue, real use cases, real users, real adoption. So I'm, I still, even though my, I'm happy with my position in Bitcoin, I'm all in from the, from my, the percentage of my portfolio that I want to get, want to, I want to allocate toward Bitcoin is there now, right? I'm not waiting for a dip in Bitcoin. We could have one. And if we have a black swan event, is it possible Bitcoin pulls back? Yes, maybe. But at this point, it's too risky because it's a maybe. And if Bitcoin or ETF gets approved tomorrow, we could likely see a 40. And then, then you will really be kicking yourself that you didn't have as much Bitcoin as you wanted to have when that approval hit. But from what we can see here is ETH is not getting that kind of response. It's a Bitcoin spot ETF that will be approved first. And so... I believe that even if this happens, right, let's say that we don't have a, a black swan and that we do get the Bitcoin ETF approval, I expect a huge pump in Bitcoin. And then I expect some delay before altcoins start pumping. So it gives you time. And if that, but believe me, if that spot Bitcoin ETF is, does get uh, approved or when it does, I will then for sure come back into all the alts I sold 50% of that I talked about in my videos. And uh, if you guys haven't seen that, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Man, I, I'm telling you my playbook, play by play. So I am positioned still uh, with dry powder sitting on the sidelines in case this war expands. And I, I talk about all this guys in my video yesterday. It's really, really good. Go watch it if you haven't seen it. And uh, the whole logic behind why I think a black swan still could happen. Of course, as we get closer to November, that's less likely to happen in my opinion. And uh, once we get, you know, once the presidential elections intensify, um, that is, is significantly less likely to happen. And, uh, 
and so yeah, I, I like I said, I would like to be back in the market completely by November. So I'm thinking that you know maybe we could see something in 13 days, a black swan. And if that happens, I'm gonna be really well positioned to buy back in my favorite alts at a very big discount, 50% maybe. And uh, and if it doesn't happen, cool, uh, I'll, I'll buy, back, buy back in, right? Because I'm I'm pretty confident. Um, I would like to be back in the market by early November. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I will catch you tomorrow. See you later. Bye-bye.